presentation for us tonight. Larry? Yes, my name is Larry Pease, uh, along with Brian Ficarello. We represent uh, the liaison between the Board of Education and the Consulting Committee for Vernon Regional, which is Rockville uh, Agricultural Science and Technology Education, formerly known as Rockville Co ag. Okay. New name, all right? Uh, we live in Bolton, our lives, both of us, with the Bolton High School. At this time, we'd like to present a senior that represents us from Bolton, the Board of Education, here in Florida. Here in the mic, okay? Thank you. How cool Yeah. <laughs> um, so, my name is Trina Doyle. I'm a senior at Rockville. Um, I actually live literally like two minutes away. Um, and I am going to go to Assumption University after school. I'll be playing baseball and studying finance. Um, I think that the Rockville Agriculture Program was a really good fit for me because it got me into people I had similar interests with, like as mine. I had to learn new skills in areas like shop related I liked, I maybe didn't know as much about. And uh, I did a lot of stuff with the shop, like engine mechanics, on like tractors, learned how to weld, which is like a useful skill for like, I don't know, something broke, I can just weld in, fix it. Um, and I'm also now getting into some plant, like stuff, I guess, floral design and like greenhouse management um managing like the crops and everything with like the scheduling and making calendars for it um i think it'd be good life skills where if maybe something doesn't work out i could always have something that i have like a skill mm -hmm. that i can use and um i think that that was one of the main benefits is getting like skills where like if i'm like out of a job i don't have like a skill that i could try and pursue um that even i can use in my regular everyday life, like I do like an oil change, change my tires, all that stuff. Um, and I learned a lot more about those things at Rockville. And the environment is very good um, with, it's a lot. I know Bull is nice, very small. Rockville is like, my grade is the size of the whole school. So it's something to meet new people and uh, work on social skills with a bigger setting, which was cool. I got to see like more different groups of people. And there was a lot of new things. I like, met a thousand new people and I transferred there. And um, it was a very good experience. I think that it's really important to like kids being able to go there because for me, I think it was the best choice for my time in high school. Um, I enjoyed it a lot and so I got a couple more months but it's gonna go back quick um so my highlights there would probably be just like getting a lot of new friends um making like honor roll um uh, like the like learning environment was very good for me um some like the help that I got was very good um I would like I like baseball a lot. It was a really good baseball experience for me um, with the coaching and getting involved with some clubs that I maybe wouldn't have like got into if I like uh, didn't get out of my comfort zone. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like it like got me more, more like accepting or like willing to get out of my comfort zone and try new things. Um, my future plans will be to Sorry, I said, uh, go to Assumption. I'll be playing baseball, uh, study finance. I'm in a five year program to get my master's. And then, and while I'm in school, I'll probably try and get internships as I get older. And uh, after school, pursue a career in finance, whatever the best route might be for me after I finish. And I'd like to thank you for your time and giving me the opportunity to go to Rockville. Uh, so I get positively impacted my future and thank you again. Good job. So Larry, wait one second now. One question you have any for questions? you. You got to check this, you know, Larry's my buddy and we chatted. So I want to know from your perspective, what was the the best skill that you feel like you walked away with from the program? 
the very best? I would probably say some like social skills. I feel like we're very good. We're like, I just like went to school with the exact same people pretty much my whole time. I like knew everyone. So I feel like it got me to be like more outgoing okay, to get out of my shell. I also feel like practical wise, I feel like the welding was something that will really help me because yeah. it's like a, a skill. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, I'm pretty yeah. solid. I could weld something right Good. now. So. Good to know. I know who to call. <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations. Well done. And congratulations on going to Assumption and playing baseball. And don't forget to send that email. Like I told you, hopefully there's more money for you. Congratulations, mom and dad, too. And thank you, gentlemen, very much. Good job. You guys can feel free to stay or you can feel free to go. It's up to you. All right. Next, we're going to move on to the Bolton High School Annual Musical. And as soon as the, they head out, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Maselli, who has a brief presentation for you. All right. Good night. Thank you. Best of luck. Uh, so it is with great pleasure that I share this month's celebration of excellence uh, for Bolton High School. Uh, as you may know, um, and you can draw your attention to the screen while I'm talking, don't look at me. Um, as you may know, a few weeks ago, we did present Annie as this year's musical. On the screen, you can see the many faces of BHS that made this performance possible. There were 42 students in the show, which represents 20% of the student body here at Bolton High School. This is especially impressive if you consider that many of our winter athletes could not participate in the musical. And there's 42, that's why I put their faces up there instead of having them all come in. <laughs> um, additionally, three staff members performed on stage with our students, and an additional four staff members directed and assisted. We even had the invaluable help of two members of the class of 2023. Student participation came from all grades, representing athletes, non-athletes, musicians, and students who have never sung in public before. In fact, if you consider any subgroup, they were represented in this musical. Ms. Carballo once again chose the right show at the right time for the current students and thus allowed all interested members of the BHS community to be part of the show. As you can uh, see on the slides, uh, there were several lead characters, including our own Mr. Jodwin. Mm -hmm. um, students in the non-lead roles typically found ways to contribute in more than one way. Uh, even the two students working with me on sound engineering also had on-stage roles, which meant they would jump up from the soundboard, run in the back, put on their costume, get on stage, sing, and then undo that and come back to the soundboard. Um, <laughs> we can certainly celebrate the performance of Annie, um, which was presented to over 550 audience members over the three nights. Um, but really, the, the reason I wanted to bring it to you tonight, the real celebration is the collaboration, diversity, and inclusiveness of the musicals here at Bolton High School. Mm -hmm. So thank you, Ms. Carlo. Yeah, it was awesome. It was a great show. Well, yeah, I want to add in there, one of our cast members actually opening night played the Played a state. I was going to say that basketball, basketball game, game down the hall. On and made it on stage for the first Yep, she literally so ran out of the game yeah. down the hall and made it in time. It was awesome. Yeah, and that was after they won too. I yeah. might add. <laughs> so great job. It was wonderful. Loved it. I sang every song in the back quietly. <laughs> All right. I mean, thank you. Can be on stage next year, as you can see. We're always looking for faculty involved. Yep. I count me in. <laughs> there it is. Write it down. Write it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 yep. I've acknowledged Four it. Minutes. <laughs> uh, okay, and last, uh, but certainly not least, we have Board of Education Recognition Month. I would like to um, just remind everybody that school board members are vital to our public education system. Uh, I would like to show our appreciation to these dedicated individuals up here uh, with us this evening for their unwavering commitment to our district and the success of our schools and our students. I want to extend my thanks on behalf of the students and the staff of the Bolton Public Schools to each and every one of you, Chair Andrew Roneal, Vice Chair Sue Pike, Secretary Ben Davies, members Chris Davey, Rhea Klein, Diana Pagano, and Ashley Phelan, our newest member. 
We are very, very fortunate to have such thoughtful and dedicated community members guiding and supporting our outstanding school system. Thank you for everything you do. Um, I have a small token for you a little later on this evening. Thank you. And that concludes our celebration of excellence for this evening. All right, uh, moving on to comments from the audience. Do we have anyone in the audience this evening who would like to make a public comment? Uh, additions to the agenda. Um, I would request that we please move G5, the FY24 BOE budget commitment to the finance committee for FY25 budget to be moved to 2C. I just think it makes more sense to be there. G5? Yes, to, and we'll make, create a 2C right after we do the finance report. G4. I'm sorry, yep, G4. Thank sure. you. No problem. Um, okay, on to routine business and approval of minutes. Looking for a motion, please, to approve the minutes of the February 2024 Board of Education business meeting. Okay. Is that Ria? Thanks. So. Yeah. Thanks. Um, do we have any comments or edits on these minutes? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? Um, now looking for a motion, please, to approve the minutes of the February 8, 2024 Board of Education Budget Workshop. Uh, Diane, do we have any questions, comments, or edits for these minutes? No, and all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? That motion passes. And now I'm looking for a motion to approve the minutes of the February 22nd, 2024 Board of Education uh, budget meeting. So moved. Second. Sue and Chris, do we have any comments or edits for these minutes? All right, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed or abstaining? Very good. Uh, moving right on to Board of Education committee reports. Uh, start with curriculum. So the curriculum committee met, sorry, <laughs> um, met on Wednesday. And I'm going to just briefly give you the overview of the topics because she's going to go in more depth. Um, she reviewed with us the professional development and evaluation that's been worked on this year. And we also looked at curriculum and assessment, um, a board of ed curriculum a update, a new course for music appreciation. She updated us on the, <clears throat> the reading program and the pilot information. And we talked about the seal of biliteracy. She'll explain in more detail. Thank you very much. And on to finance. Um, we met uh, and uh, we are 55% expended this year as opposed to 56% expended last year. So we're basically on the same track. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hand it over to Superintendent. Thank you. So just want to remind everybody, special education is always changing. Uh, I also want to remind everyone um, about the continued savings and salaries and benefits due to our ever revolving door of unfilled positions, um, like pretty much every other district. Um, let me review the February transfers. So we have a reclassification to cover the cost of a replacement printer uh, in the BHS main office. The old legacy printer is no longer supported and there are absolutely no parts available to even repair the one we have. A reclass to cover replacement of the, the geothermal uh, pumps and controls at Fulton High School that you made that transfer uh, last month. We're just actualizing it now. Uh, the purchase of reclass to purchase science instructional supplies, a reclass to cover the cost of BCS roof repairs that we had to do, 
uh, additional reclass for those roof repairs and central office buzz and software reconfiguration needed to be done and a reclass to cover supplies for the spring 2024 athletic season. We have a motion, please, to approve the February transfers. I'll make a motion to approve the transfers. Second. And Ashley, does anyone have any questions or comments about any of these? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone who's opposed or abstaining, that motion passes. Are we done with finance? Uh, with that part, and I'll explain the rest under the 2C that we just added. Okay. All right, great. Thank you. So um, in your packet, if you look on the second page of the budget update, you will see that we have um, additional savings that we've been able to actualize in salaries and benefits. Uh, right now, um, an additional $101,698. If you then go on to the third page, you will see that currently what we've been able to, um, where we are at at this point in time, is a projected budget balance of $348,484. So at this point, I know that there will be additional savings, but we've got a lot of still uh, revolving doors happening right now. We are in the hole for special ed for 20 something odd thousand dollars. We haven't gotten our second payment yet for excess cost. Um, excess cost this year, they put in a tiered system. Uh, we are in a tier two where a majority of the districts are. And if fully funded excess cost, we'd be receiving 88%. But that all is contingent upon what districts are requesting for excess cost reimbursement. And based on what districts have asked for, we're looking at around a 70 percentage uh, reimbursement. So for you can see like there's been a lot of ask for for special education. So um, at this point, our recommendation, mine and Casals, is to make a commitment to the finance committee towards next year's budget of $300,000. And Ashley, Rhea and I, and Kasal discussed that today. Um, th you know, that still leaves us with some operating money. I, I know that we're going to have additional monies to return. We may even have additional monies. We may be able to add to that next month. I won't know that yet till we finish out this month. But for now, that's a recommendation that we could at least then share with the finance committee uh, come next week. And again, I wanna reiterate, it is due to the revolving door of positions that we, for example, we lost a special ed teacher. Well, we hired a new one, but they're not gonna start till after April vacation, right? So there's some savings there. We haven't had a science teacher all year, as I explained routinely. We are short paraprofessionals. Um, we are short school psychologists. So, you know, there's a lot of uh, movement um, that seems to occur weekly. So that's my recommendation. Any questions for me? So we, we need to vote on Yeah, you, yeah, we should do a motion to commit $300,000 to the Finance Committee from FY24 budget savings towards the FY25 budget. So, Second. Um, Chris. Um, anybody further questions or comments on this? What Bob Monroe was uh, a million dollars. That's what he thought we'd be returning in the end. Okay. Um, I, I, you know, again, I don't anticipate we'll be there, sure. but there may be a couple hundred thousand dollars or more. Is that just a pie in the sky number, or was that it was there actual? That, that's exactly. way off. Assume so. Okay. Yeah, he, yeah, he does his own calculation. Yeah. I that was fine, yeah, I thought they'd be yeah. happy to share that. Yeah, <laughs> I hope so. Thank I'll you. Thanks. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstaining. All righty. That brings us to BHS student representative report. Mm -hmm. All right, this one might be a little long because I have to do mine. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. I did get from her, which is good. Okay. Um, 
Earlier in February, the Bowen Arts Department, including students from band and art classes, had the opportunity to go to New York City to visit the Museum of Modern Art and a Broadway production of Wicked. It was a lot of fun and there were no hiccups. <laughs> the, like Mr. Maselli presented, the Bowen Drama Club held the production of Annie from February 29th to Mar March 2nd. The show was a lot of fun and there was a large audience at each show. At the end of the girls' basketball season, which winter sports have come to a close, the girls had an amazing season, making it all the way to the semifinals of the state tournament. With that, practices for spring sports have begun. Baseball and softball have begun their pitchers and catchers week, while outdoor track has continued their preseason workouts. <laughs> On March 1st, BHS hosted parent-teacher conferences. Parents had a great time meeting their child their children's teachers and learning how they were doing in all of their classes. On March 12th, juniors had the SAT online from around 7.30 a.m. to 10.40 a.m. while the seniors had work on their capstone projects. The SAT, SAT went smoothly with no technology issues, amazing, <laughs> and seniors were able to get a good work time for their capstone projects. From March 22nd to 23rd, from 9 p.m. to 7 a.m., the student council will be hosting a lot in at the high school, there will be many games, activities, and food for students. Each ticket is $10, and all of the money will be donated to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Thank you. I know you got stuff, Andrew. Yeah, There's a lot go. going. Go, go get in there. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Well, they all have to take it on the SAT school day. Everyone's required. Correct. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So, which is great. Yeah. And then, do the kids still do a speaker? They we didn't have one this year. No. Oh, uh, it's been a few. I when COVID started, that sure. kind of shut down, and it hasn't reemerged itself. But you know, somebody shows interest, and staff member will pick it up, and yeah. it'll start again. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Yep. All right, community meeting reports. I think we can start with PTA liaison. <laughs> um, last month, uh, the PTA had their gala at Ava Luisa. It was well attended. There was lots of prizes. Um, a student will be planning their ride to on the fire truck. Sorry, uh, which family bought that one? And we have a lot of upcoming events tomorrow, half day. There's a Chuck E. Cheese fundraiser um, at, um, over in Manchester. There's an author visit on the 19th. We have Urban Air on the 21st. There's Monster Jam on the 24th for tickets. Some of these are not fundraisers, but just discounted kind of tickets. Um, <clears throat> all right, we have our public meeting on April 2nd at 6.30 at the Bolton Center Library. And on April 19th, we have Mad Science Family Night. Uh, so you can sign up for that. And if your sibling, like child sibling isn't there, so like my son who's only in preschool, he gets to attend too. So, uh, but they are looking for extra volunteers because it's going to be a two part where they do a presentation and then a hand bought activity in the cafeteria as well. So that should be well. Awesome. Great. Thank you. That's all for me till April. <laughs> That's enough. Um, all right. Do we have any other community meetings to report on? Uh, I think I've attended two Bolton Scholarship Fund meetings since our last board of ed meeting, um, just due to the scheduling issues. But uh, we're getting ready for the phonathon, which is coming up uh, later this month. Um, I misspoke at our last meeting uh, when I gave the deadline for applications. It is actually May 1st. Uh, I think I said May 5th. Yeah, okay. Um, but uh, the application uh, should go live April 1st. Uh, we've been holding off on it for various reasons, uh, but one of which is that there continues to be issues with FAFSA data. Mm -hmm. uh, being released to colleges, so a lot of kids are have not yet received any information from schools as to what sort of financial aid they will be looking at. We're hoping that we will be able to complete the application review process in time. We're monitoring that situation pretty closely. Um, Do you have like a plan B? Like, what happens if you don't get it? Because uh, it's a it's a mess. It, it, it is a mess, and 
at this point, we are our plan B is to go ahead using the data that we can collect, collect. from students Fair and enough. try to adjust our formula accordingly. Great. Uh, okay, that's great. Thanks. Because yeah, we don't want. I don't to know that I be able to right get all right, and I don't know that I have a lot of confidence that she'll have it by then. To be honest with you, based on what I'm hearing. Which is crazy. I mean, there's there's already well over 200 colleges and universities that have delayed their correct uh, acceptance day. Some as late as June June first, June fifteenth. It's crazy. Yeah. What's the problem? It's different. Right? The it's the, form, right? the FAFSA form was redesigned at the direction of Congress. Um, there were delays in rolling it out, uh, and then when it Finally came out, apparently the Department of Education was not able to process the forms until they claim they just started processing them in March, so a week or so ago, and hope to get the data to colleges this month, but you know, there's been delay after delay in the Correct. process, so who knows. So yeah. will students be in a situation where they might need to make a decision without knowing their financial aid package? Is that how it works? Potentially, yeah. or, or they might not even know what schools they've gotten right. into, right. right? Usually it's by March 15th, everybody knows. I got in here, I didn't get in there. Now we're talking June. So our, our guidance counselor really deal with helping families manage this? I think our guidance counselors have been awesome. Yeah. It's in my report. But okay, okay. yeah, so yeah, we'll, we'll hear a little more, yeah. so stay tuned, okay. yeah. Good question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, okay. Uh, do we have any other meetings to report on? All right. So I'll now turn things over to the superintendent for the superintendent of schools report. All right. I'm going to turn it over to Monica first for an update on K-5 reading, please. Good evening. Um, the last time we had an update, the question came up of what was pilot year zero, which is where we are. And uh, so we're going to build on that a little bit. We have been in our pilot year zero with Yale Education since the start of the school year. Um, in December, as you know, waiver results were published by CSDE and several additional program compendia were approved. Um, what that means is those are groups of programs. So we knew there was a possibility that the state could approve additional programs or other options. And it came up last year, what would happen if the state did that? We said we would do our due diligence and um, examine what was offered. So after review, one of those compendia appeared to suit our younger students in grades K to three, uh, and it built upon programs that we currently use. Uh, those programs are Hagerty for Phonemic Awareness and Foundations for Phonics. Uh, teachers requested to review bookworms, and it is an open source program that was approved along with, again, Hagerty and Foundations that we have in place. And the rationale for exploring the option was more flexibility for differentiating instruction, specifically for our youngest learners. And Bookworms also has a greater variety of shorter texts to help students sustain their attention. So while the uh, EL education is a high quality program in some of the lower levels, some of the units go on for a very long time. Uh, and some teachers were concerned that students might be losing interest in some of the topics. Uh, even though the work that was being performed was fully aligned, they felt like, oh, are we doing this topic again? So they tried to spiral it with different forms. So it looks just a little bit much. So they wanted to explore another option. And grades four through uh, five, and we are going to loop in six, will continue with EO education as the literature and heavy nonfiction topics are better suited to upper elementary and middle grades, bringing in more science and social studies content. We are going to do a similar pilot to what happened last year, where it was a smaller uh, stretch of time. It is aligned with where our current pacing is so that no one is missing anything and we, that will be communicated as well. And we are planning on a first read in May with our findings. Any questions for Monica on that? I want to give kudos to Monica and our teachers. This has been to Amela, to Daryl. This has been a very large lift. Um, and it's certainly, while I, I think we're appreciative of the fact that the state added some additional programs to look at, 
it certainly would have been a lot more helpful had those programs been added, say, you know, a lot earlier. So um, I just want to give kudos to everybody because it's it's been a big lift. Yes, Thank earlier you. Earlier than the middle of December would have been much more convenient. Yes, for sure. All right. Bye. Monica's going to stay up there because we've got a yeah. curriculum update for tonight. Yes. I this is taking place to, this month <laughs> instead of taking place in April or May, just for everyone's uh, awareness. Um, April 3rd, we have a board meeting on that Wednesday. It's a Wednesday, everybody, just a reminder. Uh, and there's also a finance committee meeting that night. So I'm trying to try to move some things up and streamline it because three of us at least are going to have to run out of here at 712 to be there for 715 at Town Hall. So on you go, Monica. That's perfect. It gives us that time for the teachers to work and when we have a nice presentation for you in May. Great. Okay. Um, so we do have a curriculum update. Generally in November, this is just for um, Fulton Public Schools, you know, district wide. Teachers had time to review the curricula that we're currently in our mapping software. We do use software to publish our curriculum documents. And they are, they enable us to run quality reports on assessments, scope and sequence. And you can also take a unit if let's say you decide at the end of the year and you review uh, and you decide the unit that you did uh, in October might be better suited, you know, a couple of months later, you can just kind of move it over, shift it around. You don't have to rewrite uh, over and over again. So, um, but uh, all of the teachers had a chance to review what we currently had in the software and updated courses and content. So with new teachers coming in, different skill sets, people had a chance to say, you know what, we, we haven't been teaching this unit uh, in its entirety in this way. We wanted to change that. Some things were just um, removed, changed. There were some older courses that were in there that we needed to clean up. Uh, some people used uh, moved units across content areas and anything that was not currently um, being taught because we had been adding, but we had not been subtracting. So it looked like we had some courses that we didn't necessarily have. So we cleaned it up and took those out. Um, we also introduced uh, our two new courses this year that were approved last year. Modern Band and Graphic Design, both approved last year. They've been offered uh, and are, have been more received by students. Uh, AP Pre-Calculus, which is not really a new course, but was an up, upgraded pre-calculus to AP before the school of the uh, start of the school year, has also been offered and well attended. We have about 17 students in that. I just observed it recently. Um, and I realized it's been a very long time since I've taken pre-calculus. <laughs> That's what I thought. Um, and also this year, ECE Math for Liberal Arts was approved in the fall, and that has been offered spring semester. For other content areas, World Language worked on 7 to 12 alignment for Spanish instruction. We're going to come back to that a little bit when we talk about seal of biliteracy. Um, our secondary science, ELA, CTE, business, um, when there were no major revisions and that took place at that time, um, K-6 reading revision is we already have teachers scheduled for June after school lets out to start the year, but that is still something that's going to have to continue to be worked on throughout the year next year. Um, art and music will need some time after they've worked with some of those newer courses to refine those curricula. So uh, they will continue the new social studies standards, which we've been waiting for forever. We're really... <laughs> I feel like I've been saying we're getting them in, since February of 2023. Yeah. Uh, they were released in October, but also available for wide release in December. So that that's pretty much when everyone put eyes on them. Uh, and I have spoken to the academic leader for social studies here at BHS, and they are informally reviewing it. We are hoping to see uh, by next year the state put out the um, elementary model curriculum for social studies. And that will help guide some of those decisions as well. And planned for next year, we are also going to be reviewing K-8 math and science. Um, I don't expect, I think what we're going to do is plan out that revision because we have so much to do with ELA and reading at elementary, but we are going to start looking at that, planning it and aligning it with uh, the model curriculum that state has put out as well. Thank you. You're welcome. Any questions for Monica on the curriculum update? Anybody? All right. Thanks, Monica. Okay. Can we talk about the new course? All right. <laughs>
Um, next, in a minute, we're going to have an update from BCS and BHS. But before uh, I invite Amela up, um, I just want to share with everybody that on February 1st, the Connecticut State Department of Education announced the launch of the Connecticut Educator Support Funds Initiative, helping our teachers with classroom expenses, which would allocate $4 million in RFS or funds to help pre-K through grade 12 public school educators get classroom resources through Donors Choose, a 501c3 nonprofit. The collaboration between CSDE and Donors Choose uh, would provide qualifying Connecticut educators with up to $1,000 in funding for projects, empowering them to support student success with classroom resources. Eligible requests were funded on a first come, first serve basis for as long as funding was available. I sent that message out to staff as soon as I got it. Our staff is amazing. That's all I'm going to say. So the funding was expended by Tuesday, February 6th. $4 million statewide. To be eligible, educators had to teach in a pre-K to 12 Connecticut public school and needed to create a new project that aligns following CSDE ESSER priorities, including learning acceleration, academic renewal, student enrichment, social, emotional, mental health of students and school staff. And the projects were then funded within one week of the posting. Uh, tonight, both Mrs. Kelleher and Mr. Maselli will share more information about our amazing teachers and their very rapid response to this grant opportunity. And now I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Kelleher because Mr. Giard is at BCS for parent-teacher conferences as he has middle school student-led conferences tonight, and he has a group of students and he's meeting with parents. Hello, everyone. So there have been many great happenings at BCS. Last month, we had our Looking in Theater Assembly for Middle School. Looking in Theater is a performance ensemble comprised of teenagers from the greater Hartford area who explore socially relevant issues and create original theater highlighting these issues. And middle schoolers always really enjoy this assembly every year. Today and tomorrow, like Superintendent Heck just said, we're holding parent-teacher conferences. Our middle, schools, our middle schoolers have been working very hard all year on preparing their student-led conferences and are very excited and a little nervous, I talked to a few of them today, <laughs> to present their progress to their families. Um, the month of March has been very busy with Read Across America events. On top of our usual events like Switcheroo, Drop Everything and Read, and Spirit Week, we have added in some new events this year. We did a book bingo for all K-8 students, where students got to play bingo for a chance to win a new book. Um, thank you to the PTA for the donation of our book bingo books. We gave about 30 books away that day, which was great. <laughs> Middle school is participating in a classroom bookshop next week where they can shop around and sample different genres, and then they can join a raffle for a chance at another free book. Um, our students really love Read Across America Month, and we truly love highlighting the love of reading at Bowen Center School. Right now, we are beginning to look ahead and prepare for our state testing, which will begin end of April. And lastly, BCS had 22 teachers apply and who were awarded a Donors Choose grant through the CSDE, totaling $18,577 for things like social emotional learning activities, flexible seating, math manipulatives, puzzles, speech stimulus cards, carpet circles, exercise dice, mallet holders, nonfiction texts, and library books. <laughs> Any questions for Amela? Yeah, it's a great job, right? So I would like to say, everybody, um, Amela is going to be leaving us for a little while while she goes and has her baby in May. And uh, Kelly Bear, who is our instructional coach at Bolton Center School, will be stepping in as the interim AP uh, while Amela is home with her baby. So best of luck and congratulations. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, Mr. Mustelli, you're up, sir. Doki. Um Guidance has been busy, um, and, and, and mostly in a good way. Um, so as Andrew mentioned, we did have the SATs uh, this week. Went super smooth. Um, but here's the important number. 100% is the number. So all of our juniors have taken the SAT this week. We had two legitimately sick on test day and guidance, because they're really busy and work hard, took care of those students the next day. So 100% of our juniors tested upon the SAT. And that, that's, a, that's a huge number. Um, so we're very proud of that. College acceptances have started rolling. This was UConn week. 
Um, so we have some very smiling faces uh, and some frowning faces and some in-between faces. Uh, and those typically are the faces of our seniors who didn't get into uh, perhaps the store's campus as they wanted. Um, they got deferred to other campuses. So we've already started counseling them and families. You, you know, you can try to appeal or maybe you have a two-year plan to, to move your campus and those kinds of things. So um, Todd and Amy have been and, and super busy with them. Uh, and then the whole portal thing, and whether it be um, one of the university portals to try to get your credits or the FAFSA portal, um, it, it really has been heartening to see the one-on-one -on -one meetings. So I don't know if you, you know, the layout of the building, but guidance really is kind of connected to the administrative space. So I really have a sense of what's going on there. And the number of students who are always in there with Todd and Amy and our guidance intern, um, and they will always take the time to do that one-on-one, -on -one. the fast was a mess, but let me help you recover your password. Let me help you get in it. Let me, let me send an email home to parents to say, hey, you know, you got to check your phone number because if your phone number isn't right, they're going to send you a verification code to your home number instead of your cell phone and you're not going to get verified. By the way, that conversation took place in my living room last week that actually didn't take place in guidance where my wife and had my phone, her phone, and my son's phone and was trying to get all three of us verified for the FAFSA. That's, that's, that's what it looks like. Um, they've also started, on top of all that, the scheduling process. We've talked a lot about uh, Parent Square, Student Square, and how that really has enhanced our, our operations and our communication. So for the first time ever, um, Parent Square sent out personalized letters to every parent saying, these are the classes that your child's teachers are recommending. And here are the next steps, which is meet one on one with the counselor, or put the request in, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that has been a huge enhancement that, that's really, I, I think it's been just a nice level of transparency with our families as we start that process. Uh, meanwhile, our students have been super busy. I just like to highlight periodically their, you know, their service to the community. I know Mrs. Heck mentions that part of the budget thing, but it, you know, it doesn't stop mid-year. Uh, blood drives. So blood drives kind of have been reimagined since COVID and with, you know, security issues. But we didn't step away from supporting blood drives in cooperation with the town. The blood drives are held uh, nearby, up at Herrick Park. And our students still help out and support that. It's still organized through the National Honor Society. So we're happy to, to partner with them. Um, we were also very happy to support uh, the Bolt Road Race once again this year. So for those of you who don't know, that's the big fundraiser um, for our athletic booster group. Uh, and it was very nice to see so many of our students helping out with that. Um, and as Andrew mentioned, uh, you know, there's a lock-in for fun. Um, if you can consider staying up all night long in your high school fund. But uh, the bottom line is that's that's not just for fun. It's not a class fundraiser. It is a fundraiser for St. Jude's, which is another tradition we've had. Um, and under the ESSER grant, we had uh, six teachers awarded the Donors Choose grant for a total of over $5,400 for items including expanding classroom libraries, STEM exploration kits, uh, and some uh, special printing equipment for our, our makerspace. Uh, and I will tell you that there was a little bit of a competition um, because the I got it and the I didn't get it because I, I, I literally went to bed instead of staying up all night. Uh, we had one, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think we had one teacher who's filed on Sunday morning and before they went to bed on Sunday night had been approved. That's how fast that process went. So very, very proud that some of our teachers were yeah. in on that. Our teachers were, were they yeah, were all over it, right? So yeah, yeah great job. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions for Joe? Yes, as it relates to guidance, are yeah. there things other schools are doing or our districts are doing to, to support guidance, or is there just nothing anyone can do to support these kids through this process? It's just a wait and see. It, it is. Um, you know, so I had to have, I actually called where my son is at school mm -hmm. um, and said, hey, we think, and they're like, yeah, we don't. It's everywhere. It's everybody. So I think the, the, the encouragement, figuring out the stumbling blocks like the verification, that's pretty much what we're able to do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but That's thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you, uh, Mr. Maselli, for talking about ways in which the students are involved with the broader community. I think it's critical that, that and I really appreciate the efforts uh, that both BCS and BHS have uh, been doing recently to be more visible on social media. Thank and I, I think it is helping for, from people that they really like. But there's news about great. the school being yeah. propagated. So. Okay, good. Thank great. you. That's great. We had a little glitch last week. I had sent the latest update, um, but 
but it got forgotten. So I had a quick chat with Town Hall and they're on top of it for next time. So, but they are doing, both schools are doing a great job and it was a great recommendation. Thank you. All right, that concludes my report for this evening. All right, thank you very much. On to unfinished business and starting with the Board of Education budget, FY25 budget presentation to the Finance Committee that we'll be presenting next week. So I believe you all have a copy um, at your seat. And do we want to add? Do we want to edit? We need to update the budget to reflect the lower health insurance. No, we can't do that yet because we are a, we started open enrollment today. So we have to go through open enrollment because we may have people that pick up the insurance that we didn't know we're going to. So we won't know if we actually even have savings. So the number came in lower. We budgeted 6%, it came in at 2%, but it all depends on what happens at open enrollment. And when does that period close? Um, the end of March. And then we've got to have a little time to, yeah. So it won't be until April but we will at have some that. point. We but will know before the public hearing. We, we should know before the public hearing on the budget. Yes. Yep. Are any of these area budget requests by town or updated? Those are the most updated the numbers. Updated. Yes, correct. In fact, I took one of the towns off because they're not going to yeah. be done till the end of the month. So it didn't seem prudent to leave them on there with a blank. Just wondering if anybody liked my additions at the end. It's good to me. Same. Okay. Anybody uh, have anything else to add? Um, I'm not, I don't think this is adding anything, but uh, Ellington seems to have a very low number. And I just think to, in, to be prepared, if somebody says, why is, El you think you're low, but I'll look at Ellington. What has Ellington done in the past? I mean, did they have a big increase last year? Are they well, always low or? They're always low. They have one of the lowest per pupil expenditures in the state, if not the lowest. Um, they also had some offsets um, with some other things that things like we don't have, like self insurance or you know additional um, revenue in town from a tax base that we don't have here. Answer. Thanks. <laughs> uh, anyone else on this? All right. All righty. On to new business and starting with the seal of biliteracy. All right. I'm going to turn that back over to Monica. She's going to share a presentation with you. And I just want to remind the board, um, you may remember we had a parent share with us that they felt that maybe this was something that we should look at and, and put into play. And it, it's taken us a little time to get it done, but we're here and we're very proud of this. So, and, and we thank that parent for bringing it to our attention. Yeah, we asked you to look into it and look, we did. <laughs> yes, we did. Ready to go. Um, so this is just a smaller version. I have a a long FAQ that's going to be going out to families. Our target right now is families of uh, students in grades 6 through 12, because in grade 6, that is when we would want to encourage our students to take a, uh, a world language. So this is Connecticut Seal of Bioliteracy. This was approved to move forward with this uh, in the legislature uh, in 2017. And 
It is an award that's given to our high school seniors. It is only given during senior year who have demonstrated a high level of proficiency. It is our plan here in Bolton is that it will be an award presented at graduation with the other graduation awards. There will be a seal affixed to that certificate and it will also be displayed on a student's transcript. So we, it just says, you know, how if you have something, if you're like, you know, magna cum laude, then it will just say seal of biliteracy there if a student earns the seal. Um, in recognition of their ability to be both bilingual and biliterate. So that means that they are literate in all four domains. They are able to do uh, in reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Uh, it aligns with our mission to inspire students to grow as learners, individuals, and citizens. So who's eligible for this? Any student can take the assessments that we are going to use. I mean, really at any point that they feel confident and able to, but we are looking at a target of, you know, from any time from the end of your 10th grade year, if you are taking Spanish, for example, and the only place you are taking it in school is highly unlikely that you are going to be ready or at a level of proficiency um, until you are at the earliest uh, in 10th grade. But we do encourage students to apply as soon as they feel confident enough to do so, and that may be in a variety of languages. So you will see why there may be a circumstance where a student would feel confident um, testing in a language that may not be offered in school. Um, and what is the purpose of the seal of biliteracy? It's recognition of a student's efforts to become biliterate. It encourages them to study languages, um, recognizes the value of language diversity. I'm just going to sort of um, try to encapsulate that without reading every bullet to you. Uh, but it does assist universities in being able to identify a student who might also be continuing to pursue either another language or further instruction in the language that they studied in high school. Um, when we are talking about 21st century skills and or transferable skills, we are looking at what's going to help the students succeed in a global society and certainly being multilingual, at the very least bilingual is certainly helpful with that. Um, and it encourages them to develop communicative proficiency in multiple languages. And many students often say that they don't even truly understand like really thoroughly understand English grammar until they start taking a world language. And then they have to apply what they know in English to their new language and that um, helps them. So are students gonna be limited to languages? Oh, sorry, excuse me for the typo, to languages taught at BHF? No, students can take a number of different pathways. So for example, if a student is in school for a heritage language that is spoken at home, like Greek or Hebrew, or Polish, that is something that can be tested and accepted for the seal of biliteracy. Uh, so if a student has been traveling for years with their family and this is their heritage language, we can assess in that language. The number of assessments, um, the Apple alone can assess 11 languages. Um, and then we can also assess in probably almost any other language we'd be able to find, uh, including American Sign Language, if that is what a student chooses. There are some students who may be coming from dual language programs. We have some of those in the area. Uh, heritage language, just a study of maybe your birth language, and independent study. So some students do take it upon themselves. Although I will say, Duolingo will not get you here by itself. Yeah. So nobody get too confident there. Um, and how are we going to assess it? Um, Currently, the three most common ways are going to be the Apple assessment is form B. Students have to achieve a score of intermediate three in all four domains. They may also take the Alira if they are Latin students. Obviously, there is not a speaking and listening part of the Latin test. They're only taking reading and writing for that. So the Alira is open and available for students. And if students are in a language for which we are offering the advanced placement exam, they can also take the advanced placement exam. The only drawback of that is there's a chance we may not have their AP results to get them their exact certificate for graduation. Um, so the assessments cover the following languages. If we're just looking at these three, uh, so you can see it's a, it's a relatively extensive list. And then, if you are in another language, um, these are just a few examples, Hebrew, Polish, Hindi, Greek, 
We have students who speak Gujarati. We have students who speak Hindi. We have students who speak Urdu. They can be tested in these languages. For that, we may use the Avant stamp for as adaptive assessment or another state approved assessment. It is an extensive list of languages um, if need be. And for all assessments, again, proficiency in the four domains. That's just a reminder. And uh, so we do want to encourage students to work toward the seal of biliteracy if they are able to. And we recognize it's just our recognition that this is important as being part of a global society. Mm -hmm. and we're able to do so. Great. So thank we, you. We're going to move forward. Questions for Monica? No, that's great. It's so exciting. Really thank you. I think this is uh, yeah, Chris, yeah. Um, so who will pay for the assessment? Will the um, students have to? They will, unless there is demonstrated hardship the same way we do the AP exams. Okay. I will say this is a, an affordable assessment. The Alira costs $10 and the Apple costs $20. Um, it, it, now, I, for some of the more complex languages, that may go up because it's a different assessment. But for our most common languages, it is very affordable. Very good. Um, did the state set the requirements as far as what level of yes. proficiency? Yes, that, those are published. Because intermediate, I think, is only the, like the second lowest. So it's, it's intermediate three. So it's kind of like so just above that. Like yeah. Okay. Yes. Good. Thank you. So I don't think we if need I to may, do this, uh, but yeah, it would be. Sorry, but I just, I want to publicly thank Chris Alice, um, our head of our uh, World Language Program. So it was, it was Chris and Monica and I, we've been working our way slowly through this. Uh, so I just want to publicly thank him for his his, his enthusiasm uh, and his assistance with us. Yes, yeah, we definitely ran everything by Prince of Cloud too. And we looked out all, I mean, every assessment that we could great. have available to us so that it would be attainable for us. Too. Yeah, great job, Monica, Joe, and Chris. Thank you. Could we just have a motion to approve this? I don't think we need to, but I would love to have that on the record. Uh -huh. Thanks, Di. Second. Thanks, sir. Any more questions or comments about the seal of bioliteracy? I just think it's very good that we offer our students every opportunity to do anything they can to improve themselves and their their resumes. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 I'm opposed. We're abstaining. Very good, on to our new course proposal, ECE Music Appreciation. So Mr. Tyler Langworthy came to me um, this semester and put forth a proposal for ECE Music Appreciation with a really wonderful rationale. He's been a great addition to Bolton, I'm sure you can agree. He's um, taken on AP Music Theory, he took the um, training for that and now he is moving to ECE Music Appreciation. It is a semester long UConn course. I'm reading this from his course proposal. So uh, in which students listen to, engage with, analyze and discuss music starting with antiquity and leading into the modern era. There is no prerequisite prerequisite for taking this class and students with no musical experience are strongly encouraged to sign up. The course utilizes music from all genres, primarily classical, modern, pop, rock, jazz, rhythm and blues, reggae, hip hop, country, and metal. Students will rediscover what it means to listen critically and develop basic oral skills like active listening, audiation, and a fundamental knowledge of music theory. The course will also focus on the transferable skills of critical thinking, communication, creative and practical problem solving, and self-direction. Um, Mr. Langworthy also noted in our meeting that all of our other courses are for students who are interested in performing or being part of an ensemble. And this is something that is in, available to an enthusiast who may not see themselves as a performer. There are no additional costs associated with this course beyond the teacher's edition as the text. Thank you. Any questions? Come on, you know, yes, Ria. Yeah. So I, I, I assume that the teacher is, what's the teacher's name again? Mr. Langworthy. Langworthy. Uh, I assume that he has a, a feel, uh, knowledge that he will have a tender of students, that he knows that there'll be a, a population of students that want this class. He's assessed some interest. 
I'd like to participate. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> That's a great idea. Okay, some early college experience. <laughs> yeah, it is early college experience with the opportunity for uh, UConn credit. Does that mean that the curriculum is set by UConn? Uh, it is, he does have some um, requirements you know, that he has to meet. Some requirements that he has to meet, but he is able to bring in uh, content based on, you know, student interest and in his familiarity. It sounded like the, the list of genres that you're going to focus on is very much out of uh, the Western yes. music tradition. Will there be any introduction or consideration of, you know, Asian music, Indian classical music? music That's a really good question. Other... I don't know the answer, but I will post, certainly pose that question to him. Mr. Langworthy actually participated as an instructor in this course during his student teaching, so he has experience teaching the course on it. Great. So we'll need a, a motion to approve the new course, ECE Music Appreciation. I'll make a motion. Thanks, for it. Second. So, um, any other questions or comments about the ECE Music Appreciation? I would like to thank the administration and Mr. Langworthy. I love adding things that have the opportunity for college credit, and I love adding things that do not have additional costs, which I, of course, asked. And when he said that and answered those questions, I said, this is a no-brainer. Well, please don't let that influence your vote. <laughs> Are there any other questions or comments? I was going to say more or less the same thing, but I figured you, <laughs> you, you have to let him go with it, right? <laughs> All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed for abstaining? Okay, on to healthy food certification and exemptions. Favorite annual. Yeah. Correct, yes. So uh, I'll read the motion um, because it has oh. to be, or, or you can. Volunteer, you uh, please I'll do. Fight you about it. No, no, it's a, okay. <laughs> so we need a motion that pursuant to Connecticut General Statute Section 10-215F, the Bolton Board of Education certifies that all food items offered for sale to students in the schools under its jurisdiction and not exempted from the Connecticut Nutrition Standards published by the Connecticut State Department of Education will comply with the Connecticut Nutrition Standards during the period of July 1, 2024. Through June 30th, 2025, this certification shall include all food offered for sale to students separately from reimbursable meals at all times and from all sources, including but not limited to school stores, vending machines, school cafeterias, culinary programs, and any fundraising activities on school premises sponsored by the school or non-school organizations and groups. Ask a question. Sure. How does... How does the board of ed certify non-school organizations and groups? That very last. So like, how do you ensure? when they're in our building, but then we're going to talk about it in the next motion okay. because we give them an opportunity to sell some things. Okay. Then we do it to the best of our ability. Okay. It's, it's hard to do, I'm sure. Okay. Yeah. Anybody want to move that forward? So moved. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, do we have any other questions or comments about our healthy food certification? All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed or abstaining? Want me to do that well? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, now looking for a motion that the Bolton Board of Education will allow the sale to students of food items that do not meet the Connecticut Nutrition Standards and Beverages not listed in Section 10-221Q of the Connecticut General Statutes, provided that the following conditions are met. One, a sale is in connection with an event occurring after the end of the regular school day or on the weekend. Two, the sale is at the location of the event. And three, the food and beverage items are not sold from a vending machine or stool store. An event is an occurrence that involves more than just a regularly scheduled practice meeting or extracurricular activity. For example, soccer games, school plays, and interscholastic debates are events, but soccer practices, play rehearsals, and debate team meetings are not. The regular school day is the period from midnight before to 30 minutes after the end of the official school day. 
location means where the event is being held and must be the same place as the food and beverage sales. Thanks. Oops. Does that language complicate uh, things like lock-ins or anything that is overnight? Starts at <laughs> Can you not serve anything? No, because the school day starts at 725 here. Right, but according to this, it starts at I know. midnight. But it doesn't. <laughs> the last call. We're, not, we're not worried about that. We're not. The, the last thing. call for our okay. unhealthy snacks. Mm -hmm. No, time. we're not. Okay. Well, they're selling good. the food. Uh, it may they may not be selling food who will simply be provided at, like at that event for example but for example like you know we have the girls basketball game here and we have tournament play here so they set up a little booth i don't know what else you call it right and they're selling gatorade and they're selling chips and water bottles things like that and it's associated with the event to the point that you asked before um, this is required by USDA. This is not, this is required. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's not met the Connecticut Trish, I make sure there's no like CBD boundaries or something. Like, how do you yeah. know if there's that? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, we usually buy packaged things. It's not. Okay. So you would know what we're buying. Would it just come from a parent that says, I want to add them? Okay. So there's, there's no level of assurance that we're required to do to. But we also have to meet the health department standards, standards too. Yeah, so we're we're buying baked chips and you know things like that. Anybody want to move yeah. that? So moved. Thank you. So Thank you. I'll second it. Sue would agree. Um. Die. Anyone who has any further questions or comments about this motion. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I don't oppose abstaining. Already covered G4 and on to resignations. Uh, we received a resignation from BCS paraprofessional Justine Cutting and BHS guidance administrative assistant Megan Redner. Uh, I want to thank them for their service to the Bowen Public Schools and wish them well. On to future business, if we have any. And now we are looking for a motion to go in. Okay. We're looking for a motion to go into the executive session for a discussion concerning a temporary adjustment of job responsibilities and contract amendment for the director of HR student support services and also the discussion concerning the change of contract terms for dean of students and to invite the superintendent and director of hr and student support services I'll move. Second. Jen, chris questions comments all those in favor of the motion please say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed abstaining thank everyone for coming this evening Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.